produce good-looking videos costs almost nothing more than to produce bad-looking ones. In addition, good-looking videos tend to work better for learning. There are some easy-to-follow principles of which I want to spell out one in further detail. Less is more. Your choice of presentation technique has an effect on the amount of work. In the second half of this video, I'll address some basic but effective ideas on layout, typography and graphics. Our goal is to create videos that look far better than their production seems to be worth. And in order to maximize learning, you want videos that are visually lightweight, videos that don't overload the visual sense. The best way to achieve both goals, that is inexpensive production and easy perception, is to reduce, reduce, reduce. Get rid of lines, for instance in a table. Use spacing instead. Pick only one font and use it at only two, maybe three sizes. Use only one color for almost everything. Use a second color for very important things. Don't show ten pictures, ten poor pictures, but look for one great image and display it big. I would refrain from using clip art to simply have a picture on every slide. According to Richard Meyer's research, that tends to be distracting. Many lecturers love slidomens, that is, hybrids of slides and documents. Slides with tons of text in spelled out sentences. These seem to save work because you don't have to create a a deck of slides and b lecture notes, but get away with creating a single file. But then again, a slide demand is too ugly for a presentation and still too terse to serve as lecture notes. Three items per slide is okay for academic purposes. In a keynote, you may want to go with one single item per slide. At any rate, it is easier to handle fewer items both for learning and during recording and editing. I personally would show all items on a slide at once in order to provide context immediately. Here are some very effective and cheap ideas on how to arrange different elements on a slide. First of all, switch on the grid and the snapping function so that the placement is adjusted automatically. Even better, make use of functions that ensure perfect alignment of one object with another or perfect distribution of several objects in a series. Microsoft PowerPoint, for instance, displays lines that guide you as you drag an object. A standard mistake during layout is to make a picture wider or narrower in relation to its width than it originally was. This will always look cheap. Use only one font, as I said before and no fancy one at that. Comic Sense makes designers cringe and those two other fonts here are two fancy choices as well. Writing in all caps is hard to read and looks like shouting in a comic. Underlining is ugly and a typographic sin of the early days of the web. For easier reading Line breaks need to follow the logic of the text. This means that you need to put them in by hand by pressing shift return. If you want to create your own graphics, I'd suggest that you look into techniques for graphic recording or for sketch notes. 
These are quick and cartoonish representations of ideas, processes and so on. Very much in line with Kant style videos. The nice thing is that you don't need to learn how to draw a human face. Simple cartoons are okay. Another thing to learn from the Kant style is to not immediately show a complicated diagram, but to show the process of its creation. Along with narrated explanations. This is far easier to understand. And finally, but different from Kant style, don't use colors simply to be colorful. Rather, make sure that you use each color and stroke width to mean a specific thing over the entire course. For instance, arrows depicting voltage may always be red and thick. <laughs>